All right, it's good to have you with us again on the program Dialogue. Well, we've been with you since 6 o'clock when we brought to you the headlines from the leading national dailies. In between other programs come news updates, and it is that time for Dialogue. The name remains Abdul Aziz Ahmed Kader. Well, uh, it's no more news. We've had some Nigerians return uh, from South Africa. But there are a lot of issues surrounding that. Should we be evacuating our citizens when we should actually stamp our feet and ensure that the right thing is done? Isn't evacuating Nigerians from other countries a defeatist approach? Isn't that actually uh, vindicating those who are calling for Nigerians to leave their country? Is it what we are going to do if smaller countries are going to do the same thing? What happened to the businesses they left behind? Who is going to take care of them? For instance, if one of them is from Katina, from the local government that is in the hands of bandit, bandits, who is going to take care of him when he goes to that local government? There are so many issues surrounding the evacuation of Nigerians, but then let's wait and see what happens at the end of the day. Should he be buried at the he hero's uh, acre, or should he be buried beside uh, his mother as he actually wanted? Talking about the Zimbabwean strongman, uh, Robert Mugabe, that one is brewing in Zimbabwe. On Saturday and Sunday, I'm sure we will know what will happen. Will the family at the end of the day have the last laugh, or will the government at the end of the day had, I mean, have its own way? That issue is always there. Borate raised an issue, which, of course, is not the first person raising it. Uh, most recently, the former EFCC chairman, Nu Ribadu, raised the same issue. Uh, several people have raised that issue. On this platform, we've talked about that. Governors and security votes. I mean, it seems security vote has become a conduit pie that governors are using to siphon billions and billions of uh, naira. Well, the governors collect this money on a monthly basis and in some states. Kidnapping is getting to the city center with virtually nothing being done about it. Borate yesterday, the number one army officer, raised that issue. But then, fire me, the chairman of the Nigerian Governors Forum, I mean, Forum didn't find it funny. There are a lot of issues there. Probably, gradually, uh, the chicken will come home to roost in the days ahead. Because the issue of security vote has been on for God knows when. And in some states, you remember, in some for a state, the governor came out and said he was no more the chief security officer. We were expecting that the governor would have said, I'm ah, talking about Abdelaziz Yari, to have said, okay, I'm no more collecting security votes. But then, that is Nigeria for you. So many issues within the polity, but let's leave that for now. Uh, we shall be talking about them in the days ahead. One of the most, uh, ish, one of, one of the most uh, high issues that people expected so much was the uh, presidential election petition tribunal. It has come and gone. Uh, the PDP and the former Vice President Atiku Abuka said they are going to the Supreme Court. But then, I was just asking yesterday, with, uh, we were discussing with other colleagues, I mean, will APC go to Supreme Court or probably INA go to Supreme Court on some of the issues they raised that were dismissed by the tribunal? Uh, because there were issues raised by APC that were dismissed by the tribunal. There were issues raised by INEC that were dismissed by the tribunal. Well, for instance, the... Uh, issue that Atiku was not a Nigerian by APC. Never mind that most of the people in APC now were with Atiku actually supported him to, to do so many things. But all of a sudden now they remembered that he was not a Nigerian. I'm sure you remember the Jagaba uh, of the uh, Shagari <laughs> fame. So a lot of issues. This morning we shall be doing a postmortem of the presidential election tribunal. The outcome was, well, I mean, for the first time in the history of Nigeria, eight hours plus <laughs> reading of a judgment. We saw the senior advocate of Nigerians at a point. Some of them had to take, uh, some of them have to go and see Esther. <laughs> you know what that means, within the courtroom. Or well, it was quite interesting. We have with us this morning somebody who was a presidential aspirant, a former banker. I don't know if bankers actually retired, <laughs> a financial expert. With us this morning is Mr. Matayat Sadru. Well, good to have you here with us this morning. Thank you very much, Abdelaziz. Good morning. Take care. Well, we saw for the first time in the history of Nigeria, eight hours plus, almost nine hours, presidential judgment. And they sat through the whole thing, even though some of them took a nap, wake up. And, uh, <laughs> but uh, the five-man panel led by Justice Mohammed Garba actually gave those judgment. What do we make of that judgment? Uh, well, I think uh, Nigerians have received this with mixed feeling. Mm. Uh, some people have, some sectors have said, well, this is brilliant. Uh, the fact that uh, 
they were able to itemize all the issue and they were dealt with by one after the other and being able to give clear clearly uh, the standpoint of law what uh, is required or what was required by the um, the two parties uh, you know involved in the case so I think based on the uh, uh, ruling for of day before yesterday yeah. and uh, based on the, the position of the law, the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, which governs uh, the behavior of the citizens of this country at the moment, I think they've done excellently well okay. in delivering that, just, uh, that uh, ruling. Uh, however, uh, there are certain gray areas where people um, maybe, maybe feel a little bit hard done by simply because uh, maybe because of uh, uh, prejudice or, or somehow some kind of uh, uh, pre, you know, having this mindset that uh, it was expected that it will go in this direction, um, and then some people said we are not surprised that this has it has taken this turn. Mm -hmm. However, I would say that uh, uh, for me, uh, it, it was it was a, a job well done and. Knowing fully well that that was not the highest um, court, it was acceptable for one to say, okay, if there are gray areas here, there are, there is an opportunity to seek redress. Uh, uh, and I thank God that uh, as we speak at this morning, I think the uh, APDP hasn't uh, gone to Supreme Court yet. yet. Mm -hmm. So we can talk about these issues uh, yeah. and then... Uh, really have be able to deal with it without uh, subjudice. So uh, I think that the PDP has an opportunity to go ahead and seek um, further clarification from the Supreme Court as regards to what things they think that um, were not, uh, they didn't receive uh, uh, well. Uh, and also, uh, I think that they have an opportunity to still be able to repackage their arguments on certain issues. Yes. Uh, and uh, if they are able to to do that, I think the uh, outcome of the Supreme Court will be very, very interesting. Well, uh, Bin, looking at, the, you, you, you talk about the way they took the issues one after the other. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen prior to this judgment, it started with Amin Azakari. <laughs> Amin Azakari not to be in charge of coalition because she was this, she was that. Of course, despite the fact that we know Amin Azakari didn't come to INEC mm -hmm. through President Muhammad Buhari. Mm -hmm. She was appointed by the administration okay. even before this. Uh, again, we saw the latest being that of uh, Justice Bulka Chua. Uh, because her husband is a senator, her son is, a, is this and that, and when she excused herself from that. Can we say actually some of these steps taken to a large extent uh, adds to the credibility of the judgment we get at the end of the day, the process and the judgment? Yes, I think so. For um, Justice uh, Bukhachua that was asked to recuse herself simply because of her relationship with uh, the APC, uh, and she, she did. However, I think that it was after serious uh, series of uh, engagement yeah. and then debate here and there, and um, uh, somehow one would say that it, it's a, a bit. Uh, it might be if you are just an analyst, you probably would look at it and say, "Okay, well, fine, fair, it's good." Uh, um, but if you are someone of an interest uh, in the, uh, at the opposition, you probably would say that, uh, "Well." This is, if we have to be forcing you people to take this kind of decisions, then it means that uh, you actually have a sinister plan uh, against uh, the, the judgment, you know, or, or, you know, having something against the case itself. But really, I think what is important for me and should be to, uh, for uh, many Nigerians is that, look, we must be able to, you know, with civility, engage the systems uh, at the, with the right kind of materials and tools that we have okay. as citizens. Now, the fact that 
we are not talking about going to the street or declaring that uh, we are running a parallel govern government or there, uh, there is a, a you know we're not um, having an opposition that has armed itself to fight the government with arms and uh, weapons, but they are using the instrumentality of, of the, the law, law, of the law. It's something that is welcoming. And I would implore then that uh, if we get to the Supreme Court, whatever be the decision of the Supreme Court should be accepted and without any waste of time, begin to engage in um, a very serious-minded opposition okay. that can put the government in check and deliver to the people of this country. Because what is most important to the citizens of this country is that if I wake up in the morning, I should be able to turn up my tap and it should bring out water for me. If I turn up the switch, this, the, there should be light. If I want to go out, my road should be at you. When you called me yesterday night, the first thing that came to my mind is 8 o'clock in the morning and the road that leads to my house is almost unmotorable. So you can imagine that if I have to come here, I would probably, a distance of less than 7 kilometers, I would have to probably leave my house maybe 45 minutes. Yeah, you know, so these are the things that citizens of this country are bothered. We're not really so much concerned about who is in the position of power. Are you doing the job? Can you get the job done for us? Can you give us the result? And then the people that are going to be able to do this is that the, if the government in power is sitting down with their own ideas and policies and programs and see how it can affect the citizens of this country. The opposition should be able to come with even a more superior argument mm -hmm. to say this is a look at what is happening in the House of uh, Common in UK yeah. where the Prime the Minister, of the opposition sit mm -hmm. down, they, they, you know, they have the debate mm -hmm. and everybody is bringing out their own point and people are jeering them up and say, oh yeah, this is this is good and this. So this is what I think we should be should looking be. forward to in the country. Country as the, as the days go by. Okay, I mean, going down to the, the pronouncement of the judges uh, as led by Justice uh, Mohamed Garba, uh, part of the decision uh, reached was that President Mohamed Buhari was eminently qualified. I mean, quoting uh, their, 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 their lordships that was eminently qualified to contest the February 23rd, 2019 presidential election. I, I, I see the word. Uh, eminently mm. uh, being used in that as more like a sarcastic uh, okay. expression. Uh, the judge also mentioned that those who are saying that Bari is not qualified yeah. to uh, contest, mm. that they, they, that maybe, you know, he said uh, it, is, it, it is lack of common sense. Such words are not and should never be used by a judge in okay. any matter. Uh, you don't try to spite the person that you are delivering a judgment, in, you know, someone against. Someone who comes to seek justice. You know, someone who comes to seek justice from okay. you, you don't, uh, you know, spite him. Now, um, coming to the meat of the issue itself, is the president, is President Buhari eminently qualified to become or stand for election in Nigeria mm -hmm. based on the provisions of the Constitution in chapter uh, it's section 131, which talked about qualification of uh, um, somebody to run for the office of president. It asks that it, what is required is that you are a citizen of this country and that you have at least, um, you have attained the minimum of school cert or its equivalent. equivalent. Now, I like I said, you can once the law says it's equivalent. Mm. Now there has to be a section that would define that equivalent. equivalent. Well, and also, if so who no, decide what if, is the equivalent? So nobody can decide what is equivalent in this matter. Mm. So that is lacuna in the law that provides for someone mm. to say, look. He said I must get an equivalent. So if I cannot present a school sign and I can get that equivalent. And unfortunately, uh, it like that is the that is one of the gray areas in this judgment, judgment that I think that PDP probably can look at and see how they can exploit. Now, because can they? can they? Because this is going on appeal. 
and they are not going to provide new evidences and yeah, whatever. It's, it's you know, going to be based when it, when it, on when it goes when it goes on appeal. Yeah. Uh, it still means that. Um, the, what it means is that uh, the Supreme Court mm. is going to look at the judgment that was the evidence given is by provided. the evidence that was provided mm. by the um, by the, the petitioner. By the petitioner, and then the judgment of the tribunal mm. uh, would be what basically on what the um, Supreme Court is going to take their decision on. However, I, I think that um, there is still an opportunity for the lawyers from both sides. To still present, uh, to still be, maybe buttress their point, yeah, point, their argument at that point. But, so, but let, let's take this vis a vis. Hmm. I mean, the judgment said the president was eminently qualified hmm. to contest for the February 23, 2019 uh, presidential election. Now, of course, you just uh, quoted the part of the Constitution talking about the, the list of uh, qualifications. Mm. Again, in that judgment, it said Buhari did not give information in an affidavit submitted to INEC concerning his academic qualification. Now, that's, uh, and, uh, and that is why, for me, mm. I, I think I have a bit of concern mm. in that because if he did not give information concerning his academic his qualification, academic qualification. Mm. So, <clears throat> what is the ground that the judgment was based on? To say, well, he was to say that he was qualified. eminently qualified. Okay. I, I, you, let's look at this, uh, you know, between maybe uh, two, two of us now. You, are, you, you have come to meet me for something mm. and then um, I, I, there is no, you have not given me any uh, information about what you have, your capacity, uh, probably it has been displayed in several quarters that you have this capacity and all of that. But you come in to meet me for an interview and we're having a chat and you say, oh, well, I, I can do this, I can do this, but I don't have any particular evidence to tie that your claims to. Uh, you go to a court. So if there is no um, academic in information Contained in the affidavit that President mm. Muhammad Buhari was, uh, uh, you know, Present, submitted presented to INEC. Mm. So, on what basis was it clear to run for election? Because it is required that you must provide this information. Yeah. So, th this is a contradiction, and and I think, like I mentioned, there are the gray areas where someone will say, "No, wait a minute," the Supreme Court must. Look at these particular two, two, two judgments or two issues that were um, cleared right. by the tribunal, right. and then come out and say, "Okay, clearly, President Bar, because it is required that you must attain this, and your attainment of that must be proven by uh, an evidence." Now, some people say it is a picture. Uh, of President Buhari with some other of his classmates. classmates. Uh, I, can you go and take pictures with some people mm -hmm. in Harvard and present yourself as Harvard, Harvard but, 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 graduate? But, but, but again, we saw uh, Waeg presented this uh, issue of certificate. Mm -hmm. He presented the certificate to yes. President Buhari. Do you think not presenting that certificate as an evidence in court is strategic? As far as an, ABC is concerned. I think it's an, indi an indictment mm -hmm. on President Mohamed Dubari. Okay. Because if he, if he gloriously received that certificate, certificate with so much Fun celebration, fair and... fair <laughs> celebration with so many uh, media uh, uh, present yeah. that they were capturing his, uh, the, uh, presenting the, the certificate, certificate to, him. to him like like an award. Mm -hmm. Now, so if you have, if Waiek, that is the body that issues results and um, why a certificate, so people are giving you, why didn't you present it? And it might be a strategy to say, you know what, um, this is, I'm not just uh, be going for the election no. for the first time. For the first time. I've been going for election and several times. I've never presented. And I've never presented this, uh, this uh, certificate. certificate. Mm. If I decide to present this certificate today, they might pick on it. But I, I would have had, I would have suggested a, a situation where the 
elaboration of that ceremony okay. of receiving the yes, WAEC result mm -hmm. from President from uh, yeah, the WAEC officials shouldn't have. It shouldn't have been. I okay. think at this point, all of these things, you know, just make a bit, cause a bit of confusion here and there. Mm. But if you look at uh, uh, the matter mm. as it is, uh, what the law would always look at is what is the position of the Constitution. Of the Constitution. Okay. And and uh, as yeah. is, there is an escape route clearly provided for. Okay. In that provision of section 131 okay. for President Mohamed that Google? says hmm. certificate or its or equivalent. Its equivalent. Go and define the equivalent. It will take us another 10 years to, to define the <laughs> equivalent of where, where the, the time that we don't do, we don't <laughs> even have. <laughs> All right. is the half line mark of the program. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, well, we'll look at the issue of SAVA, the issue of uh, even the PDP dumping uh, it's evident on the tribunal uh, without backing it up. The issue of uh, the man from Kenya who couldn't prove anything at the end of the day. Don't go away. We'll be right back. season is here and it promises to be loads of fun on star times light up your imagination with amazing programs on stqs nickelodeon jim jack and baby tv and also stand a chance to win cool gifts in star times kiddies holiday promo from 1st to 31st of august wondering how it works here's how we charge two months from basic bouquet and stand a chance to win amazing gifts like 50,000 naira, school bags, or water bottles. That's not all. Kick start the fun on ST Kids 7 days free viewing from 1st to 7th of August. Welcome to the home of fun. Star Times. Enjoy digital life. <laughs> Listen to this special announcement from the government and the malaria partners. You and your family need to start using your nets now. Sleep inside the net every night to protect you and your family from malaria. Encourage your neighbors to hang and sleep inside their nets. The more households that sleep inside the nets, the better the community are protected from malaria. For Malaria Free Kaduna State, play your part. This message is from the government and malaria partners. <laughs> Thank you for being there. The program is a dialogue reaching you from the stables of Liberty Television, Voice for All, and Vision for All. And we are doing a post-mortem of the Presidential Election Petition Tribunal. And our guest this morning is a fidential analyst, uh, a former presidential aspirant himself in the just-concluded election that we are actually talking about, talking about Mr. Matthias Tadu. Well, one of the issues that actually hit up the polity was the issue of uh, Sava. <laughs> whether the uh, whether election results were transmitted electronically or not, and what have you, I mean, PDP insisted that they could swear by all means that actually uh, there was a server. Why they came out and said there was no server? Now, in the ruling, the 
Uh, judges said uh, the manual for the election issued by INEC did not provide for electronic transmission of results of the election. Mm -hmm. uh, it said petitioners failed to prove that election results were transmitted electronically. And of course, the last straw that broke the camel's back, uh, petitioners witness 59, who was brought from Kenya, failed to prove that there was an INEC server. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I think that uh, it is, it, whether, even if there was server, mm -hmm. And even if there was an electronic um, transmitted, transmitted result, result mm. once yes. INEC says that we did was not, none. there's not anybody can do about that. But what if the uh, petitioner could prove it? It, it? Okay, fine. Now, if you see, there are a lot of the, like to this day in this current world, mm. um, when it comes to electronic activities, you find it a bit difficult to prove anything there because there are a lot of. Uh, uh, criminal activities being done um, on, t on, on the internet. So you can imagine if I decide to generate result, do all sorts of things, use all kinds of code to do one thing or the other, and then I present something like that and say this is it. Uh, the, the umpire that um, carried out this, this uh, um, election says, mm -hmm. no, I did not use this. But you are saying that no, I have. How do we? How how do I authenticate what you are presenting? How does the judge authenticate what you are presenting? So that in itself is not something that anybody should have taken serious as a case to say we are going to pursue this uh, in in court mm -hmm. because there were no basis. Like I mentioned, there is nowhere in the Constitution of Federal Republic of Nigeria where Saba is mentioned. So how do you want to use the law, the constitution, to justify your, um, your talking about Saba? Then the, the witness you are bringing from Kenya, Kenya. And he said he heard uh, the, or he, he got this information yeah. from so so. These things don't make any sense. I think that, I, like I said, PDP missed the argument. The point should have clearly been that the election was rigged. If you want, if you have evidence on that, you you can get evidences on the fact that the election was rigged. You can get evidence on the fact that the election was marred by irregularities Irregular. and violence. Now, what you will do is that you stick to this position. Now, at the end of the day, whatever be the outcome, let it be that you have done justice to the case and you have helped in improving the electoral processes in Nigeria. Yeah, okay. But having to go and be arguing on issues that you know you cannot be able to substantiate mm -hmm. in court, why are you wasting your time? It doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. I, I, I would really um, advise those who are politicians who want to contest an election, you want to go in, into election, have a proper plan that you can be sure that once elections are done and you feel you are not you are not satisfied but with the result that is given to you, you have your own clear court evidence, evidence that you can take to court. No matter how difficult it is, if I you, you've seen um, Senator Olujimi uh, has been yeah. you know uh, declared the winner, this, yeah. uh, declared winner, and um, Senator Ojo Ojo see why because the people that. Um, uh, presented their cases, we are able to prove mm. their case. If Beyond can, reasonable doubt, they always say. You get the point. So, if you cannot have that kind of uh, uh, clear court uh, uh, case, mm. don't bother yourself the going, going to the court. courts. Oh, but still, looking at the PDP, because of course, I mean, talking about the issue of server, I mean, the judgment said uh, uh, PW59 relied on hearsay information about the said INEX server posted on a website. Uh, by a purported whistleblower who was never identified. Uh, again, one of the major issues, I mean, still talking about the PDPs, the judgment said petitioners merely dumped documents, particularly electoral materials, on the tribunal without demonstrating uh, them by tying the evidences of any of their 62 witnesses to the documents in their bid to prove the allegations in their petition. You see, uh I think the lawyers that handled, I'm not one, mm -hmm. but I have a very keen interest in law because uh, 
I want to one day be president of Nigeria and I wouldn't want any lawyer <laughs> to come and start telling me uh, stories. Mm. Now, the thing is, one of the things that I think that the lawyers of PDP did not do is that they were not having outside of court, okay, you know, uh, um, and do, trying to do the case one by one on their because look you are talking about a presidential election pre-trial trial pre-trial trial mm -hmm. sitting down with your own and then have both sides mm -hmm. to sit down and say yeah is our own argument there will be a counter argument then from there you look at the case and say okay look these are the places that these people are going. where if we if you are a, uh, a player of game of chess mm -hmm. you know that when you are you want to clearly win a game of chess, it is suggested that you should be twelve points, twelve steps ahead, ahead of, of your, your opponent. opponent. Mm. You cannot be sitting down and say, "Okay, we are." Did, did, I think that they did not, and because of that, you see, they, most times uh, they were more like going to court. They will go to court. It's from the court that they, some of them will see certain evidence and then say uh, develop yeah. argument from that. Mm. No. You should have had a pre-trial trial, sit down, do a serious strategy, and put everything watertight. So that once you present your case, look, it is so, it to me, is ridiculous for someone, for, for us to have as many as possible sounds yeah. in that uh, league that a judge will say they, 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 they just dump, dump their dump. documents that on was the a, tribunal. That is an insult on the rank that they carry mm. as hands. It should, it, it, to me, it's it's really, really not, um, it shouldn't be. If they had done a very good job, mm. the, even the judge would have commended them for doing a, a thorough very job. thorough job. But having to... to, to oh, 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 Mr. Matthias, what could be wrong? This is an article we've seen fought over Sonja tooth and nail, mm. judicially, and won most of his cases. At a time when we know how brutal Oba Sonja could be, the extent Oba Sonja could go and one of you things like that. Mm. This was an article we know that at any time article came back came out in the past mm. from his economic team, security team, legal team, everybody praised them. Mm. But this time around, it seems as if he has lost that. What could be wrong? Where is it? A many thing, you know, probably uh, a lot of people might have seen the battle as a lost cause right from the beginning. And some of them might have looked at it and said, well, there's really nothing you can do. And then also, you let's not also forget that you are dealing with an opposition that they, they also think that this, they are smart. Okay. Now, you have a situation where um, the case of Onogen, yeah. when it came up, a lot of people said, Look, first thing that someone told me is a checkmate. <laughs> now, it, it, was, it was like a lot of people felt, oh, look, these guys have made the best of the move, uh, moves that is available on this chessboard. Mm -hmm. Now, so if the, or if the, if the uh, what did they call them, the petitioners feel that, ah, look, well, this is a lost battle. I think the energy, the enthusiasm to really do justice to mm -hmm. this uh, case probably they lost that interest right from that. And I think that that is what has clearly played, played out, out during the uh, debates that took place at the... But, but again, if you look at it, Buhari had gone through these routes mm. three consecutive times. Mm. From the electro, electro, LMA election petition tribunal up to Supreme Court. Mm. The last time he even said he was not going to go to court. But the party insisted they must go to court. Mm. Again, <laughs> you mentioned on again. Onogen's name came up because he actually gave the minority report mm. in favor of uh, a Buhari Den, candidate mm. uh, Buhari Den as, as it was. Yeah. Could it be that the Buhari team must have learned so much, haven't gone that's, through this route three, 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 three that's times? That's answer to your question. Buhari probably knew what to do. Okay. He and he, you know, there is there's something that they say that uh, you cannot buy experience. Mm. Uh, he has experienced it. He knew what, and I'm just saying this, mm. that probably he knew what was going to be a bottleneck okay. or what was going to be uh, an insurmountable particular issue. Uh, and then he decided to say, okay, look, we need to take care of business. From the, if, you, if you are someone who watched a lot of movies of uh, um, this um, 
power players. Power tussles. <laughs> you, you will see that people are always very smart. In, and I think that um, uh, the team working with President Muhammad Buhari, they are a bit more very, uh, uh, you know, they have foresight in issues that has to do with mm. power. They have more foresight in that regard because some of them have been victims of these people. Okay. So for that reason, they knew what to do. And they, But I think that, for me, I, um, in all of this conversation, there's something that is very, very critical. And that is what I would want to suggest to President Norman Bari to begin to look at. I was thinking that um, after the 2019 elections, almost immediately, uh, the President Bari would have reached out to almost all the candidates that okay. ran for election. And this is one of the things that um, uh, the former Prime Minister or President of Singapore, uh, Lim Kuo Yew, did. We was able yeah. to have a situation where everybody, whether you're in the, in the government or in opposition, you knew that, look, we are working towards the betterment of our nation. country. Mm -hmm. Now, if we are able to have a situation where we have an opposition that is not necessarily trying to drag the nation down, but that the focus is on we getting the job done at the end of the day, you would have seen that uh, all of this probably wouldn't have been uh, necessary yeah, at this moment. What? As it is, but again, before we even go to the electorate, mm. seeing the likes of, uh, what is his name, Kayamu, mm. who we know were <laughs> have been, uh, they always love to be with the opposition. Mm. When strategically we saw Buhari brought him on board in the campaign team, mm. I mean, could that be another strategy on weakening? We know the senior advocate of Nigerian. Mm. Yesterday I was telling somebody, let's take uh, our own uh, uh, Ustaz Yunus, mm. son, for instance. Mm. We know the way he, I mean, stood in for PDP in, the, in, in, I mean, in the past and what have you. Now seeing him within the APC, within INEC, could this also be a strategy that the current administration was used, I mean, used to weaken even the senior advocate of Nigeria? But this is this is how it is done in a game of football. Okay. You see a, a player, a striker, yeah. that scores against you. <laughs> the players, the coach say. I want that boy. I want to buy team. him. I want to buy him. <laughs> and if the coach, if the team is buoyant, you know, they go for him. And because he already him knows the game of uh, the he opponent. Knows, so he, he knows, knows their the strategies. Game of the opponent and then he is able to. So I think that is. And 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 I think also that um, President Bari came with so much goodwill hmm. that a lot of Nigerians were hopeful. I particularly in 2015 was on the streets of Kaduna campaigning for him like a madman. Mm -hmm. Uh, because I just needed someone that was going to be able to um, bring an end to the um, corruption that we had in the country at that time. You know, however, I was supposed to stand in elections against him in 2019 mm -hmm. because I was um, not pleased with the outcome of his four years. And, and I, I think that maybe because of that, they were able to woo a lot of people oh to my. their own side. Mm. However, they have not been able to use these people, you know, in the right manner. And look at uh, the, our dear friend you call, uh, Professor Kiamo, Kiamo, who, you know, a very brilliant lawyer, mm. who when he was um, screened by the... Senate. The Senate mm. was talking about his the attorney general, take place the Supreme the, Court, you know, uh, <laughs> unbundling the where, Supreme so, Court. So you now see what was what uh, road was given to him as Niger Delta to the man that he was prosecuting. prosecuting. <laughs> so these things, you, when you look at it, sometimes you are left to wonder: Is the president really interested in delivering okay. on his promises of you know, tackling corruption uh, and if? if if he is, then some of the moves that he is making within his own team, mm -hmm. we can say is on first error. Well, before we go, the INEC have done theirs, politicians have done theirs, and what have you, things like that. 2023 is already mm -hmm. <laughs> the talk of the town. Yes. The electorate, what will be your message to the electorate as we approach the <laughs> next election? I mean, Koja Baesa is just around the corner. Yeah, well, I think one of the things that I would first of all ask for is that I will... Uh, request for President Mohamed Dubari to sign into law the electoral amendment. Okay, bill. okay. Uh, and w w once that is done, it will help us to uh, 
you know, protects our electoral processes okay. itself. And then the second thing is that the citizens of this country must understand one thing. And one of the things that uh, someone like me was told during the campaign is that, look, you're not experienced. Why don't you go to start from a local government <laughs> and uh, get experience and then become uh, someone that is known? But I thank God that um, Shaima Kinde of Oyo, Oyo State, State. Mm. seems to be, you know, smashing all these and yeah. sticking all the right boxes without any single experience, experience in of political, political space. Mm. Now, I think that until we are able to get people, citizens, um, uh, citizen-centric kind of leadership, uh, some, some kind of uh, 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 electoral process that is powered by the citizens of yeah. this country. Now, one of the things that happened during the campaigns of uh, Shei Makine, because he's, um, to a large extent, very buoyant on his yeah. own, yeah. so there were, not, uh, there were no um, godfathers who sponsored yeah. him that are going to be asking him for returns and all of that. But for for the citizens of this country, I think I would ask for a request that all of us begin to see this process of building a nation as a joint effort, as a joint venture. That if we can put our energies together, we will be able to elect people that are going to represent the interest of the citizens of this country. And we'll be able to create jobs for millions of young people we have on the streets of this country, provide security for every single citizen of this country, provide a, you know, an environment for people to thrive. Take back and our country. Let's have a nation that well, we can be very, very proud. proud of as citizens of Nigeria. On that note, we end the program this morning. Mr. Matthias Sandu, presidential aspirant, uh, is a financial analyst. Well, uh, so much, so much that I will say. Thank you very much for your time thank this morning. You, All you. right. There, Miwa, thank you for investing your time with us. Again, same station, same time, when we shall be here again to talk about other issues. I am Abdul Aziz Ahmed Kader. Have a wonderful day ahead. The holiday season is here, and it promises to be loads of fun on Star Times. Light up your imagination.